um, there was um, great unity with regard to the main points. What I really liked about the debate is that we had quite a diverse group of experts on the panel and the, the responses were diverse. It's really good to see that when you look into different areas of, of expertise, you're getting different responses. And I think this is what we have to do more. We have to make sure that we do not only put a focus on technical aspects, but that we get this diverse group of people coming up with their own solutions. So I really appreciate it. That was a good, good debate. COVID-19 definitely had a major impact on the cybercrime landscape. Uh, we saw it especially in the beginning when companies and governments were forced to look for alternative solutions, so uh, people working from home. And in general, they were not prepared, not at least not well prepared. So there was a gap of uh, lab, lack of uh, VPN connections and things like this. So we had a lot of people working from home with uh, poor connections, with weak connections where offenders were taking advantage and they were attacking them. Over the time, this has now definitely improved, but we see that it's just shifting. The focus is just shifting. We see registration of fake domains uh, related to vaccinations and cure um, and all of this stuff. So it's definitely, there's a lot going on. Digitalization has uh, uh, speeded up and so are the crimes, absolutely. I think there are two key challenges that I see when I'm talking to governments, usually ministers. Uh, the one is they want to come up with a response, a regulatory response. That means they want to come up with a legal framework, a policy or a cybersecurity strategy for the country to protect people, business in the country. On the other hand side, they need to protect themselves. It's really important. Uh, governments, um, government institutions are increasingly victim of attacks. Um, ITU is paying a lot of attention in their cybersecurity activities in highlighting this aspect and trying to help countries to improve their situation in this regard. Um, and so they really need to speed up um, their defense um, activities uh, because we see that the attacks are increasing. Well, that's a very difficult question. I'm a law professor, so I in general believe in regulation. I'm not quite sure if it really makes that much sense to regulate safety. I think in a very careful way we can do this. I would especially focus on the providers. I would um, not so much focus on the users, on trying to regulate them. Um, but when it comes to the key, key elements of how to protect yourself, what are technical measures that should be implemented, I think the providers would be something I would focus on. Um, and then we should really put a focus on giving them the opportunity to protect themselves in to the, the degree that they would like to do and being able to do this based on an informed opinion. Well, I would love to say that it is the responsibility of the industry or the government, but um, I think neither of them really has the full understanding of how much uh, privacy they, they they would like to see and, and how much security and there are different approaches. I mean, there are some people who would like to see more privacy and some people would like to see less. So in general, I think everybody has a responsibility there. It would be wrong to wait for others to take over the responsibility. So we should uh, um, equip users with the knowledge and the technology that they can take their decision. And I think in some areas we see good results. We, for example, see it with regard to privacy in, in Europe where you have a consent question in the beginning when you open a website, they're asking you, okay, how much privacy do you want? Do you want to restrict the ability of us to track your activities or do you not care and just say, okay, let's go for it um, to maybe improve the experience. So, so I think this is the approach we should, uh, we should have where we give users the power in their hand to decide how much they want. Oh, it's incredibly important and I was really sad in the, in the very beginning of the pandemic when I saw that we had to drive down a lot of activities they were completely cancelled because I think this this exchange is the most important thing and to share something which is important for me when I'm participating in those panel discussions or when I'm giving speeches I know exactly what I'm going to say um, I've heard it a hundred thousand times because I said it so often but what I do not know is how is the audience going to respond what questions are going to be there or in a panel discussion what is the contribution from the other people and I find this most fascinating this is what I'm looking for forward to. So having this forum again and having the ability to discuss now with the additional remote um, ability, so right now only remote and in future maybe hybrid, we probably have the chance to get way more people to participate in those um, events and have way more views, especially from the developing countries.